In our last episode, Sophia discovered a pre-war USSA beacon that was still active. The signal was still strong. The problem is that it should have lost power years ago, which means that somebody has been keeping it active. And since she and her crewmates have been in space until just recently, it couldn't be any of them. Who's keeping this USSA beacon active? And for what purpose? Who alive today would even know about it? And so Sophia sends us to go and retrieve this beacon, with the hope that whomever's been tending to it all of these years will come by looking for it. The beacon is coming from Valley Galleria in the mire. Valley Galleria is a pre-Wastelanders location, but it's not involved in the primary plot of the game, and it only has a minor role in a couple of dailies and side quests. So while we are here, let's take the opportunity to explore Valley Galleria and to learn what role it plays in Appalachia. Arriving from the west, we see a large Valley Galleria sign outside. Even all those years after the apocalypse, this sign is still illuminated at night. Right next to the sign is a bus stop, an empty abandoned bus, and a red rocket truck stop. Near to the red rocket truck stop is a dead Brahmin and ghouls. Sometimes I find dead settler bodies and even a death claw here. Next to the dead settler and the Brahmin is a duffel bag with the note, Volunteers Needed. Don't just survive, thrive! The Responder Survivors Volunteer Program is now offering basic and advanced training free. Feeling sick when you eat or drink? Sign up for our new Responders Volunteer Survivor Program at Flatwoods. We'll keep you safe and train you to live better too. Want to learn how to build a camp that isn't going to blow away in a radiation storm? Or do you want to just help us build a better tomorrow? Sign up for volunteer advanced training at Morgantown Airport's main hub. Bring your own building supplies. Responder Miguel. This was part of the responders' pre-plague recruitment strategy. Not only to help people, but recruit people to join the responders to help even more. We'll learn more about the responders' plight and their ultimate fate when I start my series on the full story of Fallout 76. The red rocket truck stop has a ruined car in the garage. Here we find a weapons workbench, a couple of containers, and a ton of scrap. The auto shop has more scrap. And behind the counter, we find a stash box. That's handy. Looks like I'll be walking away from Valley Galleria with all the scrap. So heading out, we move into the Galleria parking lot. Here we see dozens of pre-war cars still parked here, and amongst them, a number of scorched. We see the big double doors that enter the Galleria to the east, so to start, we'll move north to explore this small building over here. From the signs outside, we see that it was a restaurant, but we don't know the name. Most of the signs are generic. The only unique one we find says, Eat Here. Moving through the door, we arrive in the eating area. There's not a whole lot of scrap laid out on these tables. There's an empty bathroom, and going behind the counter, we see a couple of mannequins. These must have been pulled from the nearby clothing store displays at some point after the bombs dropped. They're not really menacing right now, but at night they're kind of creepy. Heading out of the restaurant, we can explore the parking lot. As we approach the main doors, we can take care of a few more scorched. We see that next to the restaurant, there were a number of pre-war stores, and it looks like we find much of the brand signage of the stores inside the Galleria on the exterior facade. And these are unique to West Virginia. Little Italy, pizza, and pasta. Valley's Boutique, Sample Styles, Credit Terms, Big Steve's Sporting Goods. I look forward to exploring the ruins of each of these. Above the big double main doors, we find the large Valley Galleria sign. This was likely brightly illuminated before the war. And on the ground beneath it, we find another brand sign. Gray and Gould's Jewelry Designs and Repair. So there was a jewelry store inside. At the very top, we find one final brand sign. DeMarco Boyle Housewares. <coughs> now, the layout of Valley Galleria 
has changed over the years. We see the big double doors beneath the Valley Galleria sign. This is now the only entrance. But back when I explored this place the first time, there was actually a second door leading inside that we find in an alleyway between the diner and this big ruined building. They likely cut this from the game because a door here leading to Valley Galleria doesn't make any sense because this big ruined building is actually physically separated from Valley Galleria by another alleyway. There's this huge gap. So going through this second door shouldn't allow us to even enter Valley Galleria. The inside of Valley Galleria is a big L shape, but it's actually flipped in the wrong direction. It's in the shape of an L, as if the alleyway cutting off Valley Galleria from this ruined building didn't exist. However, standing on the roof and looking at Valley Galleria, we see that the L actually goes the opposite direction. Here we find a loading bay with trucks but inside, we don't find any evidence of a loading bay. So the exterior of the building is kind of baffling when compared to the interior. To produce this video, I'm using a combination of new footage and old footage. So even though this alleyway door is now gone, we'll start exploring by entering from the western alleyway door. Upon entry, we hear the shopping music still playing from the Galleria PA system. And we can take out a few more Scorched. There are two stories. This southern portion of the L is partially flooded. We see some double doors to the right with a skeleton draped over a cigarette machine. And near to these, we find a staircase going up. Before heading upstairs, we can finish this section. We see an elevator to the northwest, but it's busted. And then we see a path to the north, which leads to more shops on this level. So to finish this section, we need to head up the stairs to the second floor. Moving left, we go around the balcony until we find a shop against the southern wall. This was Valley Boutique, and through the windows inside, we can see a couple of scorched. Behind one of the counters, we find a first aid kit on the ground. On the eastern side, we find a women's changing room with a number of doors. One is locked with a skill level two lock. Here we find that one of the dressing rooms is booby trapped. <sighs> Why did they booby trap a dressing room? A hole in the wall lets us crawl to one of the men's dressing rooms on the other side. In the men's section, we find a door leading back to the clothing shop next to a wooden crate. Another one with a combat rifle, some ammunition and an ammo box inside. And another one with a sleeping bag and a skeleton holding a 10 millimeter pistol. Moving back through the hole in the wall, we can finish exploring the women's changing room. But both of these are empty, save for one man's skeleton. Heading back out, we can move to the southeastern corner where we find an end of dungeon steamer trunk. And inside is the USSA beacon. We've got what we came for. Now to uncover the story about this place. On a table next to the end of dungeon steamer trunk is the note, Lucy's Journal. Dear Journal, Valley Galleria has been a dream come true so far. The ghouls in the area generally keep people away from us and the added bonus is all of the furniture and junk food. Now I actually have time to try and see if I can reverse this disease. We also had a few more join up recently. One woman, Sarah, came here with her sister who's been unaffected by all of this. It's good to see a supportive face from someone who's not one of us. It gives me hope. So a bunch of ghouls holed up inside Valley Galleria after the bombs dropped. We do find the body of a weak feral ghoul draped over one of the tables. But when we got here, we killed Scorched. Perhaps this tells us that Lucy and the other ghouls who came here lost their minds and went feral only later to be killed by the Scorched. Valley's Boutique has a number of signs on the walls that we don't find anywhere else. Valley's Boutique, I'm in love with a wonderful boy. Ha, so even before the war, they all knew these songs. Gilbride Fabrics, Jane Clay Dresses, Quadriga Cloth, Donna Gordon Dresses, and Quad Ankles. Gilbride Fabrics, $160. Donna Gordon Dresses, $320. Quadriga Cloth, it's needle something and color fast. 
and Jane Cloy dresses, $320. More of that pre-war inflation at work. Heading out of Valley Boutique, we can continue to explore this second level. We find a few more empty vending machines and containers. The top of that elevator we saw below us, and that's it. To continue, we have to go back to the staircase and take it back down to the first floor. Now, to wade through all of this water towards the other portion of the large L. Along the way, we find a utility room to the right with scrap inside. At the end of the flooded portion, we find a staircase and a ramp leading up to the main section of the mall. We see a floor above us, and from here, the Scorched try to attack us. At the northern end, we find an employee's only door, which brings us into the kitchen of a restaurant. Here we find scrap on the countertops and shelves, one skillable zero-locked toolbox on one of the counters, and that's it. There's no other door out of here. So heading back out, we can turn east. We see that there were tables and seating just outside this restaurant. And moving past some ruined vending machines, we can take out some more scorched. <laughs> This was another restaurant. We can go down a northern door and turn left to go behind the counter. But aside from some refrigerators, cash registers, and some scrap lying about, we don't find much. So back to the hallway, we can turn east into a men's restroom, which is mostly empty. And the women's restroom right next to it is likewise completely empty. So back out to the main area, we find ourselves right in front of some escalators, which we can use to explore the top level in a minute. Continuing clockwise, we find a door on the wall that leads to another restaurant. Here on one of the countertops, we find Jacob's Hollow Tape. God damn it, Ella. What the hell, what the shit hell am I doing here? Breathe, damn you. You know you can do this. Okay. This is Jacob Lerner. Probably soon to be deceased. On account of some crazy whack job scientist chasing after some goddamn plants. If anyone finds this, this here's my last will and testament. Want my want my baseball mitt to go to Scott. Uh, all my smokes and liquor for you, Carly. Let's see here. My snack cakes. Those for you, Charlie. No, 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 no. Strike that. And screw you, Charlie. You are half the reason I'm in this mess to begin with. This corroborates what we deduced from Lucy's journal. She and the other ghouls who moved in here did turn feral. And there were so many here that when Jacob arrived, he couldn't fight his way out. But since we found Scorched here, this means that Jacob arrived before the Scorched Plague took over Appalachia. Jacob Lerner here mentioned a whack job scientist chasing after some plants, and then he named her Ella. We already know from the primary plot that there was a member of the Free States named Ella Ames. She even has her own bunker, Ella Ames Bunker. There is a side quest associated with her called An Organic Solution, where we have to finish research on and completion of a new anti-radiation chem called Rad Shield. In order to create the Rad Shield, she needs a number of components, one of which is a plant, Strangler Blooms, which grow around dire chemical Dire Chemical, which is just north up the road from Valley Galleria. I think we can presume then that Jacob was forced into Valley Galleria while on a quest to collect Strangler Blooms for Ella Ames so she could finish her Rad Shield. But what was his motivation? Why was he trying to help Ella? And who's Charlie? He ended by saying that Charlie was the reason he was in this mess to begin with. And why was Jacob here at Valley Galleria instead of at Dire Chemical, where the Strangler Blooms actually grow. As we moved out of the restaurant, we continued to explore this primary level in a clockwise fashion. As we passed the escalators in the middle of Valley Galleria, we saw a number of interesting sights. There's a small stage with a piano on it. We see a mannequin here standing next to a microphone. This gives us the impression that pre-war shoppers were serenaded by mannequins. And this actually hints at the original purpose of Valley Galleria, much of which was cut from the game. 
Valley Galleria was supposed to give us the side quest called Distress from Galleria, a three-part series of quests where a pre-war mall artificial intelligence named Cindy was trying to combat a bunch of mannequins that had come to life and taken over the identities and lives of Cindy's pre-war fellow employees. During this three-part quest, it's our job to either defeat these living, breathing mannequins or side with the mannequins and dress them up as the dead people they are now trying to represent. Yeah, it was a pretty involved quest, and all of it cut from the game. I'm pretty bummed about that, because it actually sounds interesting. There are a lot of great details here, including a number of skeletons in the audience watching the mannequin performer, one of whom is holding a flip lighter, and space teddy bears riding toy rocket ships for children, getting ready to blast off into outer space. At the eastern end of the bottom floor, we find a number of magazine racks, a few checkout counters, and against the eastern wall, we arrive at DeMarco Boyle's Housewares. This was a pre-war appliance shop. This place is filled with dozens of destroyed appliances, almost all of which act as containers, giving us a great opportunity to make use of the scrounger perk. A doorway to the north leads to an escalator that brings us upstairs. This leads to the second floor of the same houseware store where they sold other goods. We'll go up there in a minute, back into housewares. We can kill more rad roaches and loot more refrigerators. In the southeastern corner, we find an elevated kitchen area protected by a bunch of refrigerators that have been stacked alongside it, creating a barrier. On the kitchen counter, we find Jacob's Holotape number two. Somehow, I survived the night. <clears throat> Not sure how those things haven't found me yet, but I won't complain. And lucky me, I found some old candy bars and a new cola. Ah, <sighs> can't tell if life's toying with me or not. Cause if it's gonna, if it's gonna keep me fed, just to throw me to the wolves. <laughs> God are gonna have some words when I get to them pearly gates. <sighs> I did some reflecting last night. You know, I thought about how stupid it is I'm in this whole situation on account of some girl. Just stupid. But Ella... She's... she's smart. <laughs> Smarter than I'll ever be. And nice. I never did meet a girl that had given me the time of day. Mm -mm. Well, Carly don't count. Carly's kin. But to think, all I wanted in the end was to get Ella those flowers she wanted for... for experiments. <laughs> No, not worth dying over. No, siree. Nearby, we find a table with Nuka-Cola on it and a sleeping bag on the ground, probably where Jacob survived the night. So he was here because of Ella Ames trying to find the Strangler Blooms for Rad Shield. And at last, we understand his motivation. He had a crush on her. We also walk away with a juicy lore tidbit. He referred to Nuka-Cola as Nukola. It's even in the subtitles. And a new cola. I guess this means we can presume that before the war and just after the war, Americans would sometimes refer to Nuka Cola as New Cola for short, kind of like how we refer to Coca Cola as Coke. After looting more containers and housewares, we can head back out the main door to finish exploring this bottom level before heading upstairs. Continuing clockwise, we start to move back towards those central escalators. To the left, we find an electronics store. Heading through the door, we can get rid of some scorched. Here we find a jukebox that's still functional, but a bunch of destroyed radios, ham radios, televisions, telephones, and other appliances. Behind the counter, we find a metal box, and it's here where we'll find the signal booster if we're on the quest Tracking Unknowns. This is the quest we get from Hardball outside of Harper's Ferry. Out of electronics, we can continue clockwise. We arrive at what I think was a pre-war toy store. There are four skeletons piled in the doorway and an overturned stroller in the middle of the store. And we find blocks and toys over all of the shelves. Heading out and continuing left, we arrive at the primary entrance. 
These are the double doors we saw beneath the huge Valley Galleria sign outside. It was the other way to enter the place. Directly above us here, we find a skylight. We are sent here to take a picture of this skylight as part of the Bucket List quest, a new quest that came with the Wild Appalachia update. It's the quest that gives us our ProSnap Deluxe camera. Immediately to the left of the main entrance, we find gray and gold jewelry designs and repair. But this place has been well looted. We find all of the display cases, but inside I walked away with just a couple of lockets and silver pocket watches. Continuing clockwise, we arrive at an out-of-order Porta Diner. I never did get it to work, which might be why we see the out-of-order sign on it, but then again, I'm just unlucky anyways, and have only gotten this to work for me once. With that, we arrive back at the stage with the mannequin at the piano, and we've done a full loop of Valley Galleria. To continue, we have to take the escalators up to the second floor, but first, to get rid of some scorched. <laughs> As the escalators are in the middle of Valley Galleria, when we reach the second floor, we have to either go east or west. We'll start by going east in a clockwise direction. Here we find Little Italy, pizza and pasta. After dealing with some scorched inside the pizzeria, we see a sign on the wall, dinner choices. One, take it. Two, leave it. Now this pizzeria was no nonsense. We find loot at the tables, a bathroom, a door leading to the kitchen, and then a lower level to the east, where we find another dining area. There's a wooden crate down here, but aside from that, there's really nothing of interest in the pizzeria. Heading out and continuing clockwise, we pass by some more rocket rides for children, and when we reach the eastern wall, we find DeMarco Boyle's Housewares. This is the upper floor of the houseware stores where we found Jacob's second holotape. After killing the Scorched, we find a first aid box on a bookshelf, and we see that this level was a furniture store. Bureaus, beds, cabinets, cribs. To the east, we find an opening that leads to the top of an escalator. This is the top of the escalator we found while exploring the bottom level of housewares. Kitchen and bathroom on the bottom floor, bedroom and living room on the top floor. Heading back out and continuing to the left, we find Big Steve's Sporting Goods. Inside, we find a couple of display cases with baseballs and baseball bats, basketballs and golf clubs on the ground, and a number of interesting pre-war signs that we really only find here. Springback shorts, 125 bucks. Shirts, $95. Quad ankles, 120 bucks. And quadriga cloth pajamas, $200. In the southeastern corner, we can find an agility bobblehead and a skill level two locked wall safe. Heading out and continuing clockwise, we find an unmarked shop to the left with a couple of scorched inside. I'm thinking this may have been a bookshop due to all the bookcases. Behind the counter, we find a duffel bag, a 10 millimeter pistol, and Jacob's third holotape. This is Jacob again. That's right, still alive. Still stuck in the fucking Valley Galleria. There's ghouls all over this place, and I am screwed. I ain't got a bullet to my name, and I lost my machete in the last school that wanted to tussle. You know, the more I think about it, it's all Charlie's fault. I never should have listened to that bastard. He's got a thing for Ella. And I'm pretty sure he just wanted me out of the way. He's the one that sent me here after those, those damn flowers, huh? He planned this. I swear if I get out of here, he's a dead man. And the plot thickens. Both Jacob and Charlie had a thing for Ella Ames. They were both trying to get her strangler blossoms. It was Charlie who told Jacob that he could find them here. Big mistake. All he found were ghouls. Out of the bookshop and continuing clockwise, we arrive at another unmarked shop, but this one has a skill level one locked terminal with a skill level two locked floor safe beneath it. But after hacking the terminal, all we find is an ability to unlock the floor safe. Sadly, no more lore. 
Heading out and continuing clockwise, we pass a number of vending machines, tiptoe past a crumbling part of this upper level, until we reach another restaurant. But this one is unmarked. Heading inside, we find two skeletons sitting at a bench beneath a railroad crossing sign, still waiting for a table to open up. This must have been a travel-themed bar and diner. We find lots of traffic signs plastering the walls. The jukebox is still functional, and behind the counter, all we find is one footlocker. So moving out and continuing clockwise, at last, we arrive at the top of the other side of the escalators. There are no more shops to explore in Valley Galleria, so that's it. No further sign of Jacob Lerner. Heading out the main door, we can inspect these cars in the parking lot. More creepy mannequins standing around pushing shopping carts as if they had just finished shopping. And on the ground, next to a ruined vault tech van, we find a decaying corpse. It's the corpse of Jacob Lerner, and on his body is Jacob's fourth and final holotape. I'm alive, and I made it out of that godforsaken shithole of them all. Woo! I got daylight to burn, but I'm heading to Harper's Ferry. I even found a few goddamn flowers for Ella. <laughs> no, they may not be the right ones, but I ain't coming back empty-handed. Uh-uh. Oh, yeah. And once I'm back, Charlie Walker dead man. Once I get my hands on him, I'm gonna... What the hell? <coughs> Didn't expect to see your face out here, Jakey. At least not alive, anyways. Oh, no. Don't get up on my count. Tell you what, I'll take these here flowers and I'll give them with your regards. All you gotta do is die. Deal? <coughs> Figured you'd be on board. He survived. But Charlie Walker, his rival and supposed friend, was waiting for him. Charlie sent Jacob here, hoping that the ghouls of Valley Galleria would kill him, so he would have less competition in wooing Ella Ames. And the mention of Harper's Ferry helps us place these events in the timeline of post-war Appalachia. This happened after the Free States left their bunkers and tried to rebuild Harper's Ferry, where they had a significant presence until it was overrun by the Scorched. In fact, we should have been able to learn more about Jacob Lerner by reading Ella Ames' terminal in her clinic at Harper's Ferry. However, for some reason, this terminal entry was cut from the game. The cut entry was called Jacob, and I'll read the transcript. I met another Free States member today named Jacob. He doesn't know a thing about medicine, but he's pretty determined to help. He's been trying to make room for patients and make sure we have what we need here. I noticed he even got Charlie to start helping out a little. By the way, it's nice to see other members pitching in. We learn from Free State's lore that Charlie Walker was a bit of a leech. Before the Free States made their way to Harper's Ferry, Charlie Walker would often go into the Ames bunker and just help himself. In Ella Ames' bunker, we find a number of IOUs. IOU, all the beer. IOU, one pack of smokes. IOU, one roll of TP, sorry. I owe you one bottle of whiskey. It's only when we read the note, no more IOUs, that we learn who it was who was taking everything. Charles Owen Walker, I better not see one more IOU from you around this bunker. You may be a grown ass man, but I will tan your hide if I have to. Mrs. Ames, also known as your elder, whom you damn well better respect. This was written by Ella Ames' mother, Stephanie Ames. But now we know that Charlie wasn't always coming to their bunker just to help himself to supplies. He was really interested in their daughter, Ella Ames. And the feeling might have been mutual. During the quest and organic solution, we find the Ella's research holotape on Ella Ames' corpse. And on the holotape, we find an entry, Results. 
It turns out the boiled reduction was a no-go with the pod casing itself. That thing soaked up radiation like a sponge in seawater. I scooped out the innards and boiled them for about 30 minutes to get a good proper reduction. Mixed in the antiseptic. I'd say the ratio is about 3 to 2 to 1 right now. Reduction, antiseptic, water. I tested it on Charlie, since he was going hunting anyway. No adverse effects, but who knows? It's Charlie. He's not the brightest bulb, but at least he's easy on the eyes. Jacob was attracted to Ella because she was so smart. He admired that about her. We have no idea what Ella thought about Jacob. But even though she knew Charlie was dense, she found herself still attracted to him. But little did she know that Jacob and Charlie were only helping her because they were into her. They were vying for her affection. She didn't even realize it. And this contest for her heart ultimately led to murder in the parking lot of Valley Galleria. With Valley Galleria explored and the USSA beacon retrieved, we can head back to our camp to check in with Sophia. I suspect the owner of this beacon will come and find us. I know I would. But until then, well, I have something here that we should look into. Nice day. I noticed a strange signal that was heading right for us. It seems like after the signal approached this place, it just spun around and took off. It was strange. Sudden. Think you could just sneak over there and poke your head in? If they seem problematic, maybe stop them somehow? I don't know. Do you think it's hostile? I noticed another USSA signal approach it a bit ago, and then they both disappeared completely for a moment, and only this one reappeared. I'm not sure what that means, but there are only a few reasons why a signal disappears. Death is one of them. What's this signal doing now? Uh, I, I can't tell what it's doing there exactly, but it's moving around, so I think it's alive? Or, I guess it could be a robot. Sure. If it's a threat, I'll take care of it. Okay, just be careful. I wish I could tell what it is. It just seems so unnatural. But what does that mean in a world like this? Listen, this could be a trap. Or it could be just a big misunderstanding. I can't really say for sure. Just... Be careful. Maybe you should get out of here and get some fresh air. I did. Last time you were gone, I went on a short stroll. Didn't go far. But I saw some weird stuff. Just uh, bizarre. Saw a giant, huge, greenish uh, man with a two-headed cow. He was selling things. Super nice fellow. Potential. He said he would stop by later. Said he hopes to check on me when he can. <laughs> I can't wait. It's such a shock, but also amazing. Why would USSA robots want to harm you? I'm not sure they do. We had one of those on the ship, and it landed with me. But it wasn't aggressive. I, I don't know. But... They really aren't taking a direct line to attack me, either. Maybe... They're damaged or have been corrupted somehow. What was it like to float in space? It felt like nothing else. I, I remember spinning in space, eyes fixed on Earth. Unable to look away. So far away. So... Perfect. I'll be back, Commander. Affirmative. Out. With that, we complete the quest, bring home the beacon, and begin the quest, The Universe Conspires. Track the strange signal for Commander Daguerre. This quest sends us to Dire Chemical, but sadly I'm all out of time. We'll pick up right here where we leave off in my next episode. I publish new Fallout videos each and every week on my channel, so if you don't want to miss that episode, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. If you have already, but you still feel like you're missing out on YouTube notifications, consider following me on Twitter at Oxhorn. 
I update Twitter manually with every new piece of content that I publish. I've got a shirt shop with completely unique designs that you can't find anywhere else. My designs come on shirts in a variety of men's, women's, and children's sizes, and in a wide array of colors. You can find them on other products as well, like smartphone cases, pillows, posters, mugs, stickers, prints, etc. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming a patron on Patreon or a member here on YouTube. YouTube members and patrons on Patreon are becoming increasingly important as YouTube continues to make platform changes that make the future of YouTube monetization uncertain. So to all of my YouTube members and my patrons on Patreon, you have my sincerest thanks. I couldn't do this without you. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon with more brand new videos.